Good day viewers from Crunch Econometrics. Today we are looking at the term multicollinearity. What does multicollinearity mean? How best do you understand the term? How can it be identified? How can it be detected scientifically? And how can it be corrected? Multicollinearity simply means when there exists perfect or exact linear dependence relationships between two regressors or among regressors in a given model. We use the term collinearity when we are referring to two regressors and when we have more than three regressors, we use the term multicollinearity. An example of collinearity is what we have on the screen. We have a y-dependent variable and three explanatory variables. The 0 0.89 indicates the correlation coefficient between the second regressor and the first regressor. Well, that of 0 0.90 represents the collinearity between the third regressor and the second regressor. So in this relationship, we have two separate bivariate relationships exhibiting high collinearity. The next example is that of multicollinearity. Here we can see that the third regressor exhibits a 0 0.88 collinearity with the first regressor and a 0 0.90 collinearity with the second regressor. This tells us that the first and second regressors can best explain the third regressor to a very high degree. So this example shows us that the third regressor exhibits multicollinearity with the first and the second regressors. Now, why do we need to understand multicollinearity? This is because it can adversely affect regression coefficients. It affects the beta weights, the standard errors, and the corresponding significance levels associated with them. How can you identify multicollinearity in the model? How do you know whether your model is suffering from multicollinearity? Number one, you will observe that your R squared is high. Number two, the beta coefficients will not be statistically significant. The signs of these coefficients will also be contrary to expected RPRI. You will observe large standard errors, small statistics, and you are more likely not to reject the null hypothesis, thereby committing what we call a type 2 error. You will also realize that when you remove or add a regressor to your model, there will be substantial changes. Also, more often than not, the model breaks down. Now, let's consider a stata output showing correlation analysis involving multicollinearity. On the screen is the Gini index, which is a dependent variable, and four explanatory variables. Let's look at liquid liabilities. Liquid liabilities exhibit high collinearity of almost 0 0.83 with domestic credit and almost 0 0.93 with financial deposits. So we can say that multicollinearity exists among liquid liabilities, domestic credit, and financial deposits. Same explanation goes with broad money. Broad money exhibits high collinearity of 0 0.93 with financial deposits and um, 0 0.94 with liquid liabilities. So there is multicollinearity among broad money, financial deposits, and liquid liabilities. Now, Let's now look at the regression output and see whether this model suffers from multicollinearity. First, let's take a look at the regression beta coefficients. You will observe that the beta coefficients of those variables suffering from multicollinearity, the beta coefficients are larger than that of domestic credit that does not really suffer from multicollinearity. Looking at the standard errors again, you will observe that the standard errors are larger. They are four times the size of that of domestic square standard error. In this case, our T-statistics, we only have one very low T-ratio at 1.02. We are fortunate to have two T-ratios that are high. In cases where multicollinearity is severe, the T-ratios will be very low. Now, how can we identify multicollinearity using a scientific approach? One of such approaches is through the tolerance level. Now, what is the tolerance level? It is that percentage of unaccounted variance in a regressor. So when you do your regression, you are going to have what we call the R squared. When you deduct the R squared from one, the unaccounted variance, the unaccounted variance will be the tolerance level. This shows that level or the percentage that cannot be explained by other regressors in this particular regressor. So, the tolerance level of 0 0.10 is often accommodated. Anything below that evidences the presence of multicollinearity. Therefore, 
we can always say that tolerance levels above 0 0.10 are preferred. So the lower the tolerance level that you have is an evidence that this model is suffering from high multicollinearity. Another way by which you can identify it scientifically is through the variance inflation factor. The variance inflation factor, or VIF for short, is just the inverse of the tolerance level. It tells you the degree to which your standard errors are inflated due to the presence of multicollinearity. Like I said, there's a reciprocal of the, to the tolerance level. So if your tolerance level is 0 0.10, so that means the VIF will be 10. So that means your standard errors are inflated by 10 degrees. The, v the VIF table of the regression I put I showed you on the earlier screen is what you are seeing right here. At 11.68, this shows us that the standard errors of that model are inflated by 11.68 degrees. So this model actually suffers from what we call multicollinearity. Now, how can it be corrected? You can collect more data. You can change your scope of analysis. You don't have to include highly collinear variables in the same model. If you have to drop the highly collinear variable, it's advisable. You can also transform the collinear variable through differencing. Lastly, I wrap up by saying that multicollinearity does not violate any regression assumption. The OLS estimators are still blue because it does not destroy the property of minimum variance. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos from cruncheconometrics.com.ng.